Hey, welcome to our class of Tuesday Night Beer School, starring me, Chad, of Chad's Beer Reviews. There's my credentials, there's the books that I contributed to, or co-wrote. And uh, we're doing kind of an unusual style tonight. It's called Alternative Sugar Beer. What is uh, Alternative Sugar? You know, I'm glad you asked. All right, so 31B, Alternative Sugar Beer. An Alternative Sugar Beer is a standard beer, classic style or not, with added sweeteners, including fermentable sugars, for example, honey, brown sugar, invert sugar, molasses, treacle, maple syrup, sorghum, unfermentable sugars like lactose, sugar alcohols like sorbitol, and any other sweetener, natural, natural or artificial, that affects the flavor profile. These beers may or may not have any residual sweetness. It depends on the type of sugar, but flavor contributions are expected. Overall impression, a tasteful integration of sugar and beer, but should still recognizable as a beer. Again, not an FMB flavored malt beverage or like a hard seltzer, hard root beer, or something like that, you know. The sugar character should be evident and in balance with the beer, not so forward as to suggest an artificial product. So let's skip down a little more. Comments, the additional sugar should be apparent somewhere in the sensory profile. If the sugars do not add a distinguishable character to the beer, enter in the base style category. A honey-based beer should not have so much honey that is perceived more like a mead with beer, for example, a braggot, than a honey beer. This style should not be used for styles where the alternative sugar is fundamental to the style definition, like a milk stout, or where a small amount of neutral flavored sugar is used simply to increase gravity, increase attenuation, or lighten flavor or body. These beers should be entered in the normal a base style. All right, we'll skip the entry instructions. We're not doing a homebrew competition. Vitals all vary depending on the underlying base beer. Now, commercial examples. Uh, yeah, so they said Bell's Hop Slam, and I've had this beer quite a few times. In fact, I've reviewed it quite a few times on this show. And, you know, they make a point of saying right in the label there that it's, you know, double IPA brewed with honey. So since they're calling this an example of style, uh, who am I to, you know, question their authority? So let's get this in the glass, and we'll be right back. All right, so I've got the Bell's Hop Slam in the glass glass. I was going to use the IPA glass, but actually they make a point of saying on their website they recommend using a snifter. Now they mentioned the ingredients on here, all the honey, the hops, all that stuff. Actually, this is kind of spoilers, so uh, pause and read if you want. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I pretty much already read it. But all right, so as always, when judging beer, we start with aroma. So let's give this a whiff. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember when this beer first came out, a lot of people described it as tasting and smelling like Ecto Cooler, remember that from the 80s, the Ghostbusters theme high C. But yeah, so I would definitely call this big citrusy notes, orange, uh, orange or tangerine, um, almost like a blood orange, grapefruit, pink grapefruit, maybe a little little passion fruit or or peach or something. I would not call, I would not say pineapple. Now as far as the that honey, it's, I will say it's a little uh, difficult to discern off the nose. There is like a general kind of honey background. I find that most beers when they're made with honey, um, because honey is a fermentable, you know, the yeast eats most of it. So you don't really tend to smell honey in, you know, honey beers, but usually you can taste it depending on how much they use. Yeah, so to me, the hops are the star of the show here. Plus, you know, just that st standard, you know, kind of two-row pale malt base. Maybe a little bready. I would not call it toasty. Um, yeah, and uh, just, I would say there's an essence of honey in the background. It's it's not, I would not call it prominent, but it's it's there. So... Let's check the specs. Aroma, same as the base beer, except that some additional fermentables, for example, honey, may add an aroma. That's interesting. See, they say may add, not will add or should add, which should be pleasant, balanced combination with the beer. All right, so that's interesting that they say may add because, like I said, I wasn't getting like a ton of honey on here, but I mean, as a double IPA, I mean, it smells great. Um, so uh, I, I, I kind of penalize it a little just because like you know it's a honey beer and the honey is you know quite in the background but i'm gonna go i'm still gonna start off pretty high i'm gonna go 10 out of 12 all right appearance 
All right, well, here's the part where I, you know, do the close-up of the pour, and as you can see, it pours to a, I guess you could call it like a copper, copper amber. You know, it's a little hazy. I mean, it looks looks like a great IPA to me. Let's see how the uh, the specs say. Can't imagine it's going to be that much different. Appearance, same as the base beer, although some sugars will bring additional, usually darker colors. Yeah, um, I would say it's a little darker than a double IPA, and it's also, they didn't mention clarity on there, which is fine. It's not quite in the hazy New England IPA category, but I mean, for a double IPA, it's it looks like how a double IPA should, work, should look. All right, so now's the fun part. Cheers. Hmm. It's interesting because, like, you know, it smells so tropical or citrusy or both, really. But the, the flavor is, you know, so it smells West Coast, but it, the taste is to me is all East Coast. And I think a lot of that has to do with the honey. So I get, you know, uh, like dank pine resin, a sticky, sticky sensation. In fact, it actually leaves like kind of like a piney, resiny, almost maple syrupy, well, without the sweetness, um, aftertaste. Although that honey um, is in there, I can tell. And I think that honey is accounting for a slight sweetness or just, um, oh yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, there's going to be some residual honey and like, to me, honey is delicious. Does anybody not like honey? Um, so the honey, you know, kind of, Again, like like I said on the aroma background, it's it's a little more a little more forward in the the palate than it is in the nose, and it is accounting for a little sweetness, but still the hops to me are are just still the star of the show here, mm. especially as you swallow and then it's the aftertaste. That's when I the honey really comes out, and I don't think I would call it like sweet. It's just kind of like the the flavor of honey without like the the sugary sweetness again the yeast tends to eat most of the sugar so like any actual sugar from the honey is usually gone i mean there's you know they might miss a little but <laughs> um so yeah when beers call themselves honey beers don't expect um uh, you know to be super sugary unless the honey is added post fermentation you know a lot of home brewers use honey to uh for bottle conditioning by the way, so you want to check out how to brew. Um, you know, he, he goes through that the whole fermentation thing in there. We don't really have time to get into it on here, but that's more or less what's happening. And the honey also, I can tell, is boosting the alcohol. And this is 10% ABV. So I would say it's like a real, it's a clean but noticeably warming alcohol. And there is this, there's this alcohol sensation or flavor that i i noticed like only with like so-called honey uh type beers right, so let's see how the flavor should be flavor same as the base beer except that some additional fermentables may see again it says say may add a flavor not will add or should add which should be a pleasant balanced combination of the beer yeah added sugars should not have a raw unfermented flavor okay some unfermented sugars provide a fuller finish while fully fermentable sugars can thin out the finish yeah all right so for flavor um you know as a double ipa i mean it's on point as an alternative sugar beer you know um uh, i think the sugar or the honey is a little more subtle than i prefer but you know the specs they kept saying may add not must add or should add or whatever so it's, you know, it's right there. I'm going to go 17. All right. So mouthfeel. I would probably call this full bodied, very smooth texture. The alcohol is there. It is, you know, a clean, subtle warmth. There is like, like I said, there's like this je ne sais quoi factor of th this, this alcohol that's coming because of the honey. It's hard to explain, you know, like we'd have to take like this beer and put, you know, some like a some some standard uh, standard, you know, or, you know, 10 percent IPA next to it. And you would see the difference. You know, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, 
by myself. But yeah, so uh, full body, I wouldn't call it creamy texture. I mean, it's very smooth. Uh, carbonation is, I'd probably put about medium or moderate. But yeah, it's real smooth. It's pretty easy to drink, especially considering um, how strong it is. Although I will say the hops, the honey, the alcohol, they all linger here. And um, I guess you could say it's cloying. Um, but it's not like, it, it makes me want to have a glass of water, you know, or another sip of the beer. How to score this? Well, I will say like, yeah, that is a really comfortable mouthfeel and the drinkability considering 10% ABV. I, I'm going to go the full five out of five. And I think the honey is, is create, is helping create for that, you know, really comfortable, but big body overall impression. I'm, I'm impressed, really impressed. Um, I mean, again, I would like, like a little more overt honey character, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. And, you know, the BJCP says it's one of the commercial examples of the style. So who am I to, to argue? So I'm going to go 9 out of 10. I think it's quite a 10. So it gives us a total score of 44. Hmm. All right, so we need another point somewhere. I'm going to bump that flavor up to 18. All right, so that's going to give us a 45. You know, it's a 9 out of 10. Actually, well, actually, by their standings, it's a, you know, classic example, flawless, wonderful. I, don't, I wouldn't call it flawless. To me, it's not wonderful. But, um, yeah, classic example, yeah, for sure. Um, this is what, you know, when you're adding honey to beer, especially honey to an IPA, like, this is what can be done. Um, I, again, I know not everybody is crazy about this beer, um, I think it's just because compared to like the hazy IPAs of today, it's like so radically different. And also, I mean, this recipe has been around for, I think like what, 10 to 15 years, maybe 20. I'm not sure how long they've been making it, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good double IPA. I like it. All right. So I guess that about wraps it up. I always feel like, you know, we need to do something at the end, but I don't know what else to say. So if you watch all the way in, you're awesome. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Actually, I'll probably see you before then. Cheers. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better. 